everybody, I am Nico D. Today I'm gonna review two SBCs instead of one. So number one is the Orange Pi Plus and number two is the Orange Pi Plus 2. So both are very much alike, but they are the reverse of each other. So the GPIOs are over here, here on the other side the GPIOs are. HDMI is on the reverse side, SATA is on the reverse side. So both look reversed, but are very identical. So both have got the all winner H3 sock. The differences are this one has got an 8 GB eMMC while this one has got 16 GB eMMC. This one has got 1 GB DDR3, this one has got 2 GB DDR3 and the Orange Pi Plus only has got 100 megabits ethernet while the Orange Pi Plus 2 has got gigabit ethernet. So both are quite old, this one from beginning of 2015, this one from the end of 2015. But why do I still like these boards? Because there are so many ways to connect to them. So you've got SATA on board over here, there is also a power connector to connect a 2.5 inch hard drive or an SSD. So that is great, that's number one. So it also has got an eMMC, so for your OS, that is great. It also has got an SD card reader, that is also great. It also has got USB, so you can also connect with USB. So it has got many ways to connect to. So that makes it very good to use as an ass. It ain't the fastest for an ass. I've got a board that should be a bit better than this. But I like this board a lot to use as an ass and I will keep using it as an ass. So the only board that comes close to it is of course my NanoPi M4. But this one I need to use for testing new images and so, so this one will not become my NAS. I might buy the Oldroid HC4 for that, but for now this one will stay my NAS. So I use this downstairs, it is directly connected to my router and it also has got two hard drives. One hard drive is for my network storage that I can reach with all my SBCs over here and the other one is for my movies and MP3s. So they are very important and this one does very good for that. I've never had a crash with it, so that is good. So I've learned a lot about these boards while doing my research that I didn't know. So for example, with the mainline kernel 5.x, this one runs hotter and it isn't as fast. So it is better to use 4.19. I will show you where to find these images. They are in the Armbian archives. I cannot directly capture this with my capture device. My capture device automatically sets to 4K. These boards don't do 4K. So I can't change the display resolution when my capture device is connected. So everything will be captured with my NanoPi M4 version 2. Because I also work like that with them. This one stands downstairs and I connect with my computer here upstairs. So that is how I am going to show these boards to you. So I'm going to show you the specs of the boards. I'm going to show you the performance of the boards. I'm going to show you the temperatures. I'm going to show you what image to use. So here we go. So let's start with the specs. So I'm going to show you the Orange Pi Plus 2. So both have got all the same specs. Only differences are written right there upstairs. So let's start on the top left. So first we've got the 3.5mm audio jack, then we've got a microphone, then the HDMI connector, then CSI connector for camera, then we see the 5 volt connector for the SATA hard drive or SSD, and then the SATA connector, then the Wi-Fi with antenna, then we see the micro USB OTG port, this is not to power the board, this is only USB, then we see 2 times 2 USB 2 ports, then the gigabit ethernet, so with the Orange Pi Plus it is only 100 megabit ethernet. Then we see the infrared receiver, the SD card reader, the eMMC, the memory DDR3 2 gigabytes, then the 40 pin GPIO header, then two buttons, a recovery button and an upgrade button, then the UART debug port, then a power switch and as last the barrel jack. So it is great to have a barrel jack, I love barrel jacks, much better than anything else. 
Of course we will use Armbian on this, Orange Pi doesn't provide good images. So we go to Orange Pi, then we go down and there is the Orange Pi Plus 2 and also the Orange Pi Plus. Both use the same images. So if we go here we see Focal Mainline and Buster Mainline. If we go down we also see all Mainline kernels. And if we go here to Archived Versions then we can download old versions. So like for example here the 4.19, I will show you later on why this is important. So this is how I use my Orange Pi Plus 2. So it is connected to a 1080p display. I've got a small keyboard with it for if I want to play music for example with the speakers of my display. They ain't no good, that's why I ordered new speakers. So I've got my 2.5 inch hard drive connected to it. It's a 256 gigabytes hard drive. That's my network storage. Everything that need to be accessed with my SBCs is on there. And then I've got my 1.5 terabytes USB hard drive. This is only USB 2, so it doesn't matter I don't have USB 3 on my Orange Pi Plus 2. So when not in use I blank my screen so I don't have no screen burn. I already showed you how I connect to my Orange Pi Plus 2 in my shortest video ever. But now I'm gonna show you again and I'm gonna show you a bit more information. So here this is my router page. Here I can see the IP addresses of all devices that are connected to my router. So there the device on the Ethernet, that's my Orange Pi Plus 2. So here I see the IP address. So I open a terminal and I type sudo ssh nicod, that's my username, adds and then the IP address of my device. And this way I can work with my Orange Pi Plus 2 downstairs via the terminal. So now first I will install x11 VNC. So just sudo apt install x11 VNC. And now to start it we type x11 VNC dash use pw for use passwords. Now it asks to create a password. Just type two times your password. That's it. Now on my NanoPi M4 version 2 I open another terminal and here I type xvnc viewer. So that's already installed. So to install it you type sudo apt install xvnc viewer. And here I type the name of my Orange Pi plus 2. Ok it is written here Orange Pi 2 plus. But that's wrong. They have a very bad way of choosing names. There are so many pluses and so many Orange Pies. You can't get wise of it. So now I can work with the desktop of my Orange Pi Plus 2 with VNC. This can be handy if you want to turn on something or if you want to change some settings or so. So here you see my two hard drives. So here my 256 gigabytes. This is all my backup storage and my network storage that I need to access. Like I said. And here is my 1.5 terabytes hard drive with my movies and my mp3 collection. But that's not how I use it the most. So most of all I use it with SFTP of course. To be able to reach the files on my hard drives. So all I need to do is type SFTP colon slash slash and then again the name of my device. And like this I can play my videos. I can listen to music, I can do whatever I want with my Orange Pi Plus 2. So that is very handy. I wouldn't want to live without it. I am screen capping it with Kazam right now. That's why the video playback ain't perfect. Normally this is just perfect. And now the transfer speeds. So these are actually the same for both the boards. So the onboard SD card is about 20 megabytes per second, read and write. So the EMMC does 85 megabytes per second for the 8 gigabytes, 81 megabytes per second for the 16 gigabyte. So the SATA hard drive got 
35 megabytes per second reads and 15 megabytes per second writes. My USB 2 hard drive also got 35 megabytes per second read and 34 megabytes per second writes. This is its limit because it's only a USB 2 external hard drive. Via SFTP copying files with the Orange Pi Plus I got 14 megabytes per second read and 11 megabytes per second write. While with the Orange Pi Plus 2 this was a little bit higher, 17 megabytes per second read and 10 megabytes per second write. So here you also can see that the ZRAM in Focal, Buster and Bionic doesn't perform the same. So Bionic performs best. So all the tests for the Orange Pi Plus are done with Bionic 4.19 while the Orange Pi Plus 2 has been done with Mainline Kernel. So here you already see some difference. So with 4.19 the ZRAM was a little bit faster versus the Mainline Kernel. Now the strange thing, so the Nico D Blender render. So Bionic 4.19 without a fan but with the heatsink. 1 hour 43 minutes and 52 seconds and then Bionic 4.19 with a fan 1 hour 36 minutes and 39 seconds now the very strange thing so Bionic Mainline 5.8.5 with a fan 1 hour 49 minutes and 39 seconds so this is a lot slower than the 4.19 kernel and the temperatures are a lot higher with the Mainline kernel too Without a fan it would have taken ages with the mainline kernel because it throttled a lot and I didn't want to finish it like that. While with 4.19 it only went to 80 degrees and didn't go further and it throttled to 1.3 GHz instead of the 1.37 GHz that it is clocked to defaults. In Buster Blender was not stable so I couldn't do it in Buster. So that is already something that speaks against Buster. And in Focal there is a newer version of Blender and you can only use it with OpenGL3. So with this board that won't work. Here the 7-zip decompression results. So it is all a bit the same except for Focal. Focal is performing very badly here. Buster does the multicore test best but the Bionic 4.19 isn't far off. Here you can see two the same tasks. Both without a fan, on the left is the mainline kernel, on the right is 4.19. So as you see the temperatures are about 10 degrees difference. So 4.19 runs cooler than mainline kernel. I think there is something wrong with the voltages. That is why mainline kernel throttles a lot quicker because it reaches its temperature a lot faster. Also when you use 720p display resolution it is about 4 degrees cooler compared to 1080p. So if all you need from it is an ass then it is best to use it at 720p. And it is also best to use the 4.19 kernel. Now here the temperatures. So with kernel 4.19 no fan and idle 48 degrees in 720p 52 degrees in 1080p. Then maxed out it starts to throttle at 75 degrees to 1.3 GHz and it reaches 80 degrees maximum and it goes to 1.2 GHz but this is not often. So with the fan it only reaches 27 degrees Celsius in idle and 54 degrees maxed out. So versus the mainline kernel this is 10 degrees higher, 58 degrees without a fan in idle. And maxed out it goes to 85 degrees and it throttles heavily even under 1 gigahertz. Then with the fan it is 33 degrees celsius in idle and maxed out it goes to 64 degrees celsius. So here you can see again that the mainline kernel isn't optimal. And now as last the power consumption. So in idle it consumes a little less than a half amp and maxed out it is a little less than 1 amp. There are a lot of network storage devices that consume a lot more and that make a lot more noise. So this is perfect for me. It isn't the fastest to copy data over the network but I've got all the time. It is fast enough for me. My NanoPi M4 could do better but I'm not gonna use that for this goal. This does it well enough. I have gotten the Orange Pi Plus from a viewer so again thank you. I forgot who. Sorry for that. Too many viewers. No that's not true, I want more viewers. So my conclusion is Bionic 4.19 is the best image for this board. 
it is a very good board. It is very stable. I've never had any problems with it. Except with mainline kernel of course. So 4.19 is the best kernel for this board. There is also a kernel 3 point something with good video playback. If you want to use video playback with this. Cedrus is installed in the mainline kernel. But it doesn't work very well to play video. For that there are a lot better boards than this. So in 720p it works best. I don't think you can still buy this board. I made this video for one person who asked me to make a video about this board. So I hope you watch. And I hope a lot more people will watch it than that one person. So thank you all for watching. I hope to see you all later. Please subscribe to my channel. Like my video. Bye.